Hey guys and welcome back and yes, we got the win. Like I said, I don't care how it comes, I don't care if it was a 1-0 and it was a 1-0 against Empoli and it came from an unlikely goal scorer and someone we're going to talk about today because um, I was just going to make it in the video last week about him, ironically, and because I just thought the way his career and his, his growth in a Milan show and in, you know, in space of just over a year and a half since joining the club, it's been remarkable and... Um, I think we have to talk about someone like him who, who's very much has gone completely underneath the radar and exploded this season into a very, you know, a reliable player, someone who's adaptable and, uh, you know, he's just fantastic in all, in all fronts. You know, his confidence, his um, his personality, I think it's, it's, it's incredible. And he's becoming fast becoming a fan favourite in the club and that is Pierre Kalulu. So today we're going to be focusing on the defender and uh, to be honest, why we love him so much as Milan fans. So I guess with most players, what I like to do is kind of present a profile of him you know their age you know with the amount of money they're on right now you know the length of time on their contract what they sign you know how much they sign for the club from all these sort of things because it gives us a perspective of the player right now in this moment and obviously the past in history so Kalulu is 21 years old he signed for Milan in the summer of 2020 um it was a price tag around 480,000 euros from Lyon as a sort of um it was, I think it was deemed as a, as a training compensation fee. You know, despite the fact he signed as a free agent, you know, some money had to go the way to Lyon because obviously sort of uh, he developed himself through their academy. So he was signed for 480,000 euros, um, which is remarkable. And because of the talent he is. And then he put on a contract of 500,000 euros per year and signed until 2025. So initially a five-year contract to the club. Um, 21 years old. He's someone, at the time of signing him, he said he preferred to play at the right-back position, but can play a centre-back position as well. Something we're seeing right now as Milan fans, that he can give you that variety of positions right now. Um, and I guess, sort of, other than that, really, there's the big news coming out one of the big news, but the news coming out from the player right now is that he's in talks to extend his deal until 2026. And Milan are obviously going to reward him for his performances by giving him a contract worth more money. I think around 1 million euros uh, plus bonuses a year, um, which will keep him tied into another year and obviously, you know, keep us moving forward with the player. And, uh, you know, the, his progression matches the money he's kind of earning as well. So I think that's fantastic for him to be rewarded that contract and thus to lock him into at least till 2026. And then we can obviously review you know, future extensions as we go along in the years. Now I bring up that 480,000 euros spent, you know, as money to compensation to Leon for signing him as a free agent for the FIFA training sort of things. That's mental because apparently the valuations of the player is around 20 million euros. To be honest, I think that's, that's quite light when you consider how much players, young players are going for in, in modern day football. I think 20 million euros is quite, <laughs> I think you could probably raise it up to 25 at least, not at least, around that around that price tag. If we're being fair about it um, and his relevant experience, which we'll come on to in a bit, I think 20 to 25 million euros worth of the player, that's, that's his valuation. So we've just, you know, completely made a player out of, not out of nothing, but sort of, We've we've made this player grow. We've made this player completely grow for his career, and in the space of time, really a year, it's over a year and a half. That is, inc you know, incredible to fathom. His development has been so good, and that's fair credit to himself. Fair credit to the coach as well, who was I'm, I'm sure purely has drilled in the best instructions to the player, and he's just taken the ball by the horns. He's taken the opportunities as they've come and completely grown his way into the starting eleven. And, um, you know, we'll talk about things like how this leaves the Romagnoli situation come the summer. Does it give Milan a sort of beneficial position? Because obviously we have someone, wor wor rather than worrying about if Romagnoli stays or goes and having to sign that fourth centre-back again, we have someone there ready to go for next season. And he's currently right now growing, growing in his experience, growing in his development. And we're seeing it in front of our eyes. So just the, the whole concept of Kalulu right now at the club is just is, is brings a lot of happiness a lot of joy to fans right now so I think that's incredible so I ran up the stats quickly because I thought it's always good to look back at the, his first season at Milan because obviously he signed in the summer of 2020 and um, his first season wasn't so much like a baptism of fire it was very much kind of getting minutes where he could um, you know featuring in sort of Europa League games especially in the group stage against these traditional weaker oppositions as well but then there were times obviously with the injury crisis that we were having with players like Davide Calabria or um, when Romagnoli got injured for example before we had like Fikayo Tomori come into the club he really had to sort of wait for shove him straight into start, starting 11 um, because we had no other options and that really probably helped his development it was really sort of a single swim moment and he did Notably okay, um, you know, there are, are, a moment that stands out to me was the goal he got against Genoa, and I think it was a 2-2 draw away from home. 
Um, so moments like that, and you could see as well that he had a good pace. Um, he was he was you know learning as in his IQ of the game. I think there were moments as well where it's kind of like you know you could see he was still a bit raw in his positions, especially when he went to right back. Eventually, his distribution, in my opinion, was quite poor last season, and it's something that he's picked on tremendously um, coming into the start of this season. So I reckon this preseason he's had a lot of time to develop on that sort of technique, on his decision making. So if we go through the stats from last se- um, yeah, last season, that's the 2020-2021 season, he played 18 games, he got one goal, and he totaled a, a, a total minutes was 1,106 minutes over those games. If we compare that to this season, 2021-2022 season, obviously so far, He's played 27 games, so that's an increase there in games. He's gotten one goal. He's gotten two assists along the way as well. Um, And he's played a total of 1,617 minutes so far with still nine league games to go, another cup semi-final and potentially a final as well in the cup. Obviously there, you've seen the growth in his experience. He's getting that more exposure. Yes, Simon Kaya is out for the season. But there's still comp- in competition for his position. There's still Gabby is still at the club. Romagnoli is still at the club. You know, Tamori. So there's only really one space he can work with there because Tamori is the banker. And we'll come on to the really. This is why I love him so much because he has been that glue when we have been missing players because it has been everyone. It's been Kyle. It's been Tamori. It's been Romagnoli. He's been that one, and he's been that assurance in that position, in the centre back position. And and why right now as fans, when we consider how he came to this club. And we can afford himself, you know, he's going to be the backup right back. Right now, I'm looking at him as, a, as an assured centre-back. And how that's going to leave us in the summer when it de- comes to us dealing with right-back positions as well. And dealing with the centre-back positions going forward. So while I was making this video, I sort of made a few little bullet point notes of what I like so much about the player. And I, I made like six points here. And I'm just going to spit them out because I think they're just incredible points when it really sums up the player. Firstly is confidence. Um, there was a great video that came out, I think it was like the week before... Um, the last game uh, and it was a Milan channel they released it and it was a sort of inside thing with Kalulu taking us around the camp around Milan training ground um, I just love the way he's embedded so far into the club and everyone seems to like him not just the players the you know the backroom staff and um, you know, the people working in the canteen or the people in the kit room they love him so much because that just alludes to the fact how confident he is and you see it a lot in his sort of persona he's very he's very chilled he's very laid back but he's also you can see he's got that intensity in his head because he's that confident I love us also his, his adaptability. The fact that we could talk about him playing at right back, playing at centre back. He can play. At, he's played at left back before as well and done a decent job of it as well. I'm sure we can play him in other positions. He's playing goal if he wants to. He's that adaptable. Um, I love that about him. It's great having these sort of players because when I was growing up, and these were kind of underrated players in my opinion. They put a solid job in these players like Daniele Bonera, um, you know Ambrosini. You can put them in multiple positions in and around their main position and they'll su- they'll give you solid output. But Kalulu's got that trajectory just to hit certain ceilings, you know, that exceed players like Bonera. But so far, so good in that one. Reliance as well. Same thing with the adaptability. The fact that you can put him in these positions and get a decent output at least, let alone good output. So I think that's great to have with someone like him. I love his aggression. I love the way he just, he presses players. You see it when Tamori and, and, and Kalulu press centre forwards. It's like like, a, like a, a pack of panthers, isn't it? You know, just one will go at him firstly initially and the second one will just follow up and just clean up the ball. I love that about them. You can see that sort of teamwork about them and the fact that they can't be beaten for pace. That's another thing as well. I love I love his speed. He's just like, he's someone as well. I think when you really look at it as a centre forward and that's something that we've lacked with the players with Romagnoli in the past, you know, players before that, like Mexes and all these other players like Paletta, Mexes, Tom Romagnoli, even Kai is susceptible to, uh, to it as well, which is, is, is pace. And in the modern age, the centre forwards that we're coming up against, especially in Serie A, when you have players like Austin Men, you have players like Tammy Abraham, you know, Lukaku last season, you do need a bit of speed about you because you're going to get burnt on counter-attacks and he's just valuable for that. And the last thing as well, and this is the most important thing, is his growth. I think that's how much we love about Kalulu. The fact that he's come into this club with a humble price tag, no pressure about him, and he's delivering so far, you know, so far early on into his Milan career, let alone his career in total, is fantastic. I think we all love and, and understand this growth because that represents what we are as a club. It's a very modest sort of trajectory that we're sort of going on, and he represents that. He's one of the many players that we have at the club that represents that, and I think that's fantastic about him. And as we look to the summer, I think it's important for us to now consider him as the fourth centre-back. Um, yes, it's great that he can play right-back and he can put a shift in at left-back. That's fantastic. 
But what's his lockdown position right now? And I think it's centre-back. He's done a tre- tremendous job playing with not just you know the starting player like Tomori. He's played with Romagnoli. He played with um, Kaya last season, for example, when Romagnoli got injured. He's played with Gabia in important games as well. And he's, you know, put a very good... You know, he's been he's been the better one of the two, obviously. He's been carrying it with his speed. Most notably, their game against Roma, when going into that, playing Gabia and Tamori at centre-back was... You know, a lot of fans are dreading that, thinking that you're going up against Tammy Abraham. Roma had their first 11, and they, they smashed it. We've got the 3-1 victory there. Um... I think we look at him now and we go, you know, that's our fourth centre back. Because with Romagnoli apparently leaving now this summer, I think we have to sort of get round to the possibility that it's going to happen, especially if he goes to a club like Lazio and they, you know, can pay him that money he wants and give him those assurances for a starting eleven. We got to look at Kalulu as a great modest player who's going to be that fourth, fourth choice centre back. And then if we sign a player like Botman, and we have Fikayo Tomori, and we still have Simon Kaya under our books, and Gabier out on loan, for example. We have a great crop of young centre backs to work with. It's going to, you know, set us in a great way forward going, you know, to the future with our centre back positions. Is um, and there's also another thing as well. We talk about the right backs. Yes, you can play at right back, but I'm someone who's always been in favour of signing signing Florenzi on a long term deal. I've been, I was sort of. You know, as soon as he got back from injury and he sort of shaked off those injuries and was able to sort of embed himself into the starting rotation of the eleven and, and, and playing certain games, I saw a lot from Florenzi who I was sort of impressed. And I thought to myself, with his experience, for the price tag involved, I think we should sign him outright. And the fear was that if we did that, where would that leave Kalulu in the sort of the pecking order? Well, now he's considered as a centre-back. So I don't sort of have to worry about Kalulu getting adequate game time at the right-back position because obviously he's now in that sort of centre-back mould. And now we can sign players like Florenzi on a cheap deal. And then we can focus the money elsewhere where it needs to be. Right wingers, centre midfielders, you know, signing Botman, potentially getting a centre forward. I'd rather not want to have to spend on another centre back to sort of add to that mix. Um, so, yeah, I think that in total, I th- we just love the way Kalulu's going right now in his Milan career. And, you know, the fact he scored a goal and the winning goal against Empoli on the weekend sort of typifies everything about him and his trajectory of the club. I think he's just doing completely fantastic and he was very much rewarding of his own video this week. But anyway, guys, we've got nine more finals. I'm not, I hope we can win all nine of them because now fate is in our own hands. We're top of the table, even with Inter's game in hand, they're still below us on points. If we somehow manage to do well at the end of the season, we're going to take it a game at a time. Obviously, we're still in the cup as well to think we're in a position when we're competing for two trophies this late on into the season is a fantastic thing to fathom. But um, yeah, until next time, guys, Forza Milan.